thankful to you for giving me this opportunity to speak on this important bill. In this year of Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav, where we are celebrating our human accomplishments, I feel the time has come not only to celebrate but also to resolve today that we will leave no stone unturned to protect, preserve, and enhance our national heritage, natural heritage in this Amrit Kal. I am sure the Environment Ministry is doing something on this and would be happy One second, sorry. Sorry, one second. <laughs> and would be happy if the Honorable Minister shares with this House what his ministry is doing to protect, preserve, and enhance our natural heritage, biodiversity, and what plans it has for these in this Amrit Kaal. Sir, the House should feel proud, rather the entire country should feel proud, that in spite of India having just 2.4% of the world's land mass, we are contributing more than 8% to the world's biodiversity. India has more than 90,000 varieties of fauna, 45,500 of flora, and home to four out of 35 world biodiversity hotspots. But at the same time, if we don't act or become blind to what is happening during the last 20 to 25 years, our advantage and our conservation story would become a sad story indeed. I'm saying this because we are one of the top 20 countries in wildlife trafficking as well. We have seen nearly 25 species of fauna and flora become extinct, and more than 100 species are currently endangered. With these preliminary submissions, since, since time at my disposal is very limited, I wish to directly come to the bill and share my views with the hope that the Honorable Minister would per peruse them and take remedial measures. First, I come to Clause 3 of the bill, which talks about invasive alien species whose introduction or spread may threaten or adversely impact wildlife or its habitat in our country. I welcome this. Here I wish to bring to the notice of the Honorable Minister one study which indicates that India is losing nearly $100 billion every year due to invasive species, sir. I will give one example from my home state of Andhra Pradesh, how introduction of an exotic plant species in the 1980s in Sesha Chalam Hills, home of Lord Balaji, is now taking its toll. The plant species from Australia, Indonesia, and Papua New Guinea was introduced in our Sesha Chelem Hills was Acacia auriculiformis, commonly known as Ori, earleaf acacia, or ear pod wattle. It has disturbed ecological balance in Chittur, Kadapa, and Nellu districts of Andhra Pradesh. Now we have to replace it with native species. Otherwise, the entire biosphere of Sesha Chelem which is home to several endemic plants like red sanders, cycas, etc., would be destroyed. So Clause 3, which deals with it, is a good move, sir. But at the same time, this clause is silent on native Indian species which have invasive qualities. Hence, I suggest for constituting a task force to study this and to recommend to the ministry for taking appropriate action. Secondly, if you look at Appendix 2 of Schedule 4, item number 444, you have mentioned Pterocarpus santalinus. It is a scientific name for red sander tree, which is available only in the Sesha Chelem forest in Chittur of Andhra Pradesh. It is smuggled out of the country by local smugglers. You might have seen, in, uh, if, you, if you saw the movie Pushpa recently, it depicted uh, these type of scenes, sir. Sir, it is smuggled out of the country, and any action for smuggling of red sanders is under the Customs Act and not under the Wildlife Protection Act. It is because this tree is not a scheduled species, sir. So I suggest for consideration of the Honorable Minister to include red sanders under relevant schedule, which helps to take action under this legislation. Thereby, we can reduce smuggling and save red sanders from extinction. The next point I wish to make is about transfer of live elephants under Clause 27. Many honorable members have spoken about it. I am with the government when elephants are sold or given for performing some rituals at temples. But all I wish to say is that care should be taken against the unscientific management and apathetic treatment of elephants by administration, mahouts, and others. I am worried because 29 captive elephants died in 2021, and in six months of this year, three elephants have died in captivity. I suggest that the government should is issue strict guidelines and also create some inspection mechanism for regular checks and taking punitive action for any violation of those guidelines. Now I come to Clause 62 of the bill, which empowers the government of India 
to declare any animal as vermin, as the Honorable mention, men just mentioned uh, a moment, a while ago. Sir, we call vermin as nuisance animals, as they destroy our crops, kill livestock, and spread diseases, spread diseases. It does not mean that we kill them left and right. Nothing has been mentioned in the clause on the process to be followed to identify which animals are vermin. No transparent and accountable process based on ecological and social evidence has been prescribed. Sir, the moment a wild animal is declared as vermin, it loses its legal protection, and such animals become a domestic animal and can be killed, tamed, or traded. I feel it, would help, it will have ecological consequences, which will lead to imbalance, sir. Secondly, even the Supreme Court and Animal Wildlife Board versus India, of India versus A. Nagaraja case in 2014 categorically held that every species has the right to life and security with some intrinsic worth, honor, and dignity. So all I wish to submit to the Honorable Minister is to have a scientific approach and transparency in declaring wild animals under Schedule II as vermin. The bill proposes to increase penalties for general violations from 25,000 to 1 lakh and violation against specially protected animals from 10,000 to 25,000. I feel that these are still very much on the lower side, sir, and the Honorable Minister can consider revising it multiple times, looking at the importance of ecology and protecting nature and wildlife. Sir, the next point is the one on which this entire bill is placed, and it is the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. We joined this convention in 1976, sir, 46 years ago, and this convention mandates parties to take suitable steps to enforce its provisions. And we are implementing this in 2022. What are the reasons behind this enormous delay may kindly be explained to the House. Sir, these are some of the points I wish to bring to the notice of the Honorable Minister. The, please and conclude. I hope the, that he would act on them accordingly. Let us give a simple message to the country, sir. Let every citizen of this country love and conserve our amazing wildlife and biodiversity. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.